So we're here, we're back in the full guard. We're gonna keep working on our full guard tax this week and reviewing what we went over Tuesday, adding a few wrinkles. So I'm gonna start, good cuff grip, good grip on the collar. Raising my hips up to clear that hand or any grips that he's got. Boom, I'm gonna pull him forward, bringing my knees in. One thing I kept seeing on Tuesday still was a lot of you guys were just trying to like pull people down and hoping that was gonna work. When I'm here, I raise my hips up and pull him down with my legs. That leg motion is what breaks his posture. So if you're having problems with people's posture and guard, engage your legs more. That's gonna help a ton. I'm gonna walk my feet up until I get my knee over this shoulder here. Once we're here, I'm gonna let go of my collar grip, push his face away, bring my leg over. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm exploding my hips up. A lot of us were leaving him kind of up still because we didn't break his posture down. And when we went for our arm bar, it made it to where it was kind of in, right? It wasn't all the way in. Two ways we're gonna fix that. One, I'm gonna break his posture all the way down. But two, when I push his face, I bring my hips up off the mat to explode up for that arm bar. That way, I can pull his arm in. Once we're here, I am able to then extend my hips, thumb up good for arm bar. So we're here, grab my grips, pop the hips up, break his posture down. Walk my feet up, push his face away, explode my hips up. I want his neck right in the pit of my knee. Attach the arm to my chest, raise the hips slowly. Questions on the details of the arm bar. All of you guys know the basics of an arm bar. It's the details that you lose it. So questions on this. We'll walk through it again, but none of you have questions on a super intricate move. It's weird. Weird how that works, Carson, isn't it? Oh. Enoch, yes. You're moving your uh, right leg up. Yes. How are you making sure that your hips like stay close to him? Because a lot of times I'll try, I'll, I'll be like walking up, but I feel like my hips escape him. Mm -hmm. So when I'm here, a lot, what a lot of people do to move their hips is they r shrimp their hips out. Yeah. When I'm here, I break his posture. I'm not trying to move backwards. I'm going side to side. And if I need to, I'm also bringing him with me a little bit. That's going to help me because even if my hips, because my hips are starting kind of in line with his knee, and when I walk my hips up, they're away from his knee still. So you still have to pull him with you to follow that. That's also going to help. Other questions? Drill it out. One. Oh. Yes, always pinch the knees on arm bars. When I'm here and I get to this arm bar, if I don't pinch my knees, all I do is have loose space for him to slip his arm out. That's the difference in between tight and not tight. That's how you lock his elbow in, is that elbow and kind of that, that thigh pinch there. So I'm pinching my knees and my thighs together. Other questions? One, two, three. So I'm here. Oh. Boom, I get here, right? Get my grips, lift my hips, pull them down. I walk my feet up. And let's say for whatever reason, I'm just not confident swinging to that arm bar very quickly. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna close our diamond guard here. So what this is, is basically once my shoulder gets over, or my knee gets over his shoulder, this is diamond guard, you'll hear it called high guard, a couple, I'm pretty sure 10th Planet has some weird ass name, Dead Orchard or some shit for it. They, if you ever wanna know how to name a 10th Planet move, do acid and then come up with a name. Do Jiu Jitsu, and that's how you name shit. But all we're gonna do is I'm gonna keep a good grip on this collar. Now, when I initially set my collar grips, I always wanna have my pinky finger right on his collarbone and then grip the gi that's right there. That way, once I get here, my hand's not too deep and it's not too shallow. That's about the perfect way to line up 
your gi grip. All we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this collar down. As I do that, I'm gonna reach behind his head and grab whatever piece of fabric I can get back here. Sometimes it's gonna be right above his shoulder, right behind, I need to just get some cloth around his shoulder here. That's gonna allow me to rotate my hips, hold his, my wrist up while I drive the other hand across into a nice deep cross collar chuck. <laughs> get a good cough, you did it right. But when I'm here, that pinky grip, boom, right in. Lifting my hips up, pull him down. Walk my hips up. I like to work out of this diamond guard, so I'll sit here for a minute. I'm working, I'm attacking arms. Boom, I get this grip. And if you can't get a good solid gi grip, guys, tap his shoulder. Monkey grip, tap the shoulder here. The collar that you're looping with is doing 90% of the work anyway. When you set this grip, I'm gonna do it without my legs and stuff in the way. I'm pulling his collar down around his throat. What this does, it allows the collar to choke the blood on this side. My forearm or my wrist gets into the air and in an ideal world when I'm doing this, the other side of my wrist gets into the other side of the blood here. So ideally you're hitting both blood and air, all three pieces of a good choke that you need. Does that make sense? So when I'm here, boom, pull. Walk my feet up, boom, close that guard, set that grip, here. One mistake I saw us making on Tuesday, a lot of you guys were just grabbing here and going around and driving across. Go behind the head, it makes it tighter. It's a small detail, but it makes the world of difference. Down and around, driving that face across, curling everything in. Questions on this? What questions do we have? Will you do the hand motion without doing it? Yes. Hand down, around, and up. Even without breaking his posture and all that. Boom. Here. Without posture breaking, nothing. Just the grips on that. I can hit this without breaking his posture. The reason I break his posture is it stops a lot of his defense. Because what he's gonna start to do is start to posture up and break my grips and try to do all that. Where if I'm here, and he goes to start breaking grips and posturing, you're gonna run out of time. Time and air, that's all you got. <laughs> <Not much. laughs> so, making sure you get this grip right. If you're having to hold it for 45 seconds to get it, something's off with your grips, rework it. All right, questions, comments, concerns? One more. I'm here, I grab my grips. Raise the hips up, break his posture. Walk my feet up, get to my diamond guard, set my grip, roll the hand across, pull the collar down and around, finish the choke. Question, Matt? I saw the hands. Okay. Are you pulling him kind of down to the side? As far as here, yeah, I'm always going to be off to this angle just a little bit, and that's going to allow me to manipulate that. All right, draw her out. One, two, three. Right. Cross collar choke's pretty basic. One thing I did want to point out for you guys, when I'm getting to this cross collar choke, a lot of us are trying to like pop the other hand under his chin. I don't want it under his chin. I want it framing his face away. So watch yourself from doing that. A lot of you guys were like either getting it real close to under his chin or like purposely were like digging for it underneath. I'm using this hand is doing all the choking. This hand is just reinforcing it. Does that make sense? All right, so we're here. Now we're gonna work on our triangle. Same breakdown, same hip walk. All that's the same to get to here. But now we're gonna play a little bit of mind games. I promise you, I'm trying to arm bar you right now, I promise. I'm gonna pull on this arm, I'm gonna do whatever I can to get him to start working this arm out. And people are naturally gonna start working this hand out anyway to try to get out of this guard. All we're gonna do, I'm gonna lift my hips up, push that arm out, 
And then once I'm here, guys, I'm gonna break his posture back down as soon as I can. Now, in an ideal world, you can also pass this wrist at that same time. Now realize, in real life, you may just break that posture down and have to work on getting that arm passed a different time. So you may have to break that posture, lift it up, break it again. Now, once you get here, I'm gonna comb his hair behind his ear and grab my shin bone. That seems like a funny way to explain that, but too many of you guys grab your feet or grab your ankle to cut your angle in a triangle. I'm trying to grab right behind my, his head. What this is gonna allow me to do is post this foot on the hip. If you put your foot on the mat and I catch you, I promise you you're getting a kick in the ribs. You're like, oh, Dustin, you wouldn't do that. Absolutely, I would. So, once you're here, foot to the hip. I'm gonna cut my angle towards the arm. Once we're here, I want my shin in line with his shoulders, not going over the shoulder, in line. I'm letting go right now to explain this. You hold the entire time. Once we're here, you close the triangle, not on your foot unless you wanna break it. Really fun videos on YouTube of that. Close it on your ankle, arch this foot up, hammer this foot down, and squeeze. Without you, so I don't make you pass out. I'm grabbing my shin, I lock here. I arch this foot up because it flexes my beautiful calf. Perfectly sculpted, right? So, it flexes that calf up. I hammer this heel down and out. See how that naturally makes this little hole smaller? That's where his head and shoulder have to be. That's what tightens this up. So when I'm here and I'm in this diamond guard, boom, I pull the arm up, get it out. Pass this arm across here. I now have to occupy all this space around his neck and shoulders. So by hammering this heel not just down, but out, it tightens this thigh into place. Do you feel that difference? Mm -hmm. That's why I like that. Couple other details when we're here. If you're having problems cutting the angle with just your foot, if you put the foot here and it's just hard to cut the angle, couple places you can reach with this hand. I like to just go under the shoulder. Gives you plenty of space, right? Gives you plenty of love. If you're longer or you need help, you can grab the outside of the pants. If it's no gi, scoop this lot. Also helps you sweep if you're wanting to sweep from there. We're here. Boom. Out. Pass the arm. Cut the angle. If I need help, use it. Finish. What questions do we have on the details there? Most of you guys know how to throw a pretty basic triangle. The reason my triangle works so much better than yours is not black belt magic, I promise. It's just details. I'm going to fly you up. You go back and do like getting that arm out at the first step here? Yeah. What question do you have on it? Uh, so if he, if he doesn't want to take his arm out, what are... Think about it this way. Regardless what he does here, he is wrong. So, a couple of the natural reactions people will have. They'll try to just kind of base here and try to frame their arms up. That's fine. I'll just arm for you. Some people will try to stack you and grab your head and try to start really working here. That's when I have that one. Some people will start to escape this arm, try to start backing their way kind of out of this. That's why a triangle. And if you, when you're trying to get that arm out, if he does, if he's like not pulling it out, you still want to get it out. I can force it. Yeah, I realize there's no reason if he's both his arms are in here. I'm in this diamond guard. I can push his hand out of my way. Now, I like to disguise it so that it's a little bit better. How the fuck are you bleeding? You just made me punch myself. Jesus. Uh, you, did, you did like throw his arm into his face. Jeez. I'm sorry. That's your fault. No, get a better nose, Carson. <laughs> but do you get what I'm saying? You're hiding that little bit with a push and a pull. But once I get here, guys, realize once I'm in Diamond Guard, there is... There is probably somewhere in between 10 to 15 different submissions you can hit from this position. Whether it's triangle, armbar, omoplata, kimura, couple different chokes, couple different variations of all of that. 
variety of wrist locks. There's a ton of stuff you can do from here. So all you're doing is figuring out which one of those you're trying to set up. So for me, I'm gonna pull this arm up. Because if he doesn't pull his arm back, I'm just gonna arm bar you. Like, I'm not gonna overthink the room here. Like if I'm here and I start pulling this arm up and framing his face and he doesn't do anything, okay, thanks, I guess. Like, I don't... But naturally, when I start pulling this arm up, he's gonna start trying to... It sets him up. He has to give me one or the other. That's where my choose your own adventure example comes in. You have to make a choice. You're at a crossroads in, this, in the story of your jiu-jitsu match. As many as the options as possible, I want him to die in my story. I'm a bad author. Everyone gets to die, right? But I'm going to set myself into as many positions as possible to give myself variety of attacks regardless of reaction. So if he stacks me there, reverse arm lock or that, or that choke. Because that stacking into me will naturally make that choke tight. Both of those are great options. He tries to wiggle and back away from me. Great, force that arm out, attack the triangle or the omoplata's there. He tries to just kind of base and re-square, attack the arms. Variety of options, all from the same position, all suck for him. That's the goal. Other questions on the triangle? Antoine needs a better nose. One, two, three.